This week on Dr. Drew After Dark. The embarrassing thing is my parents being like, this guy with CTE is onto something. <laughs> this guy with a massive brain bleed. My mom would like yell at them on the phone, you're headed for hell. Oh. And thank you for sending that money. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's so embarrassing, but as an adult, I have learned so much today <laughs> in a very real way. I'm glad to be a part of it. Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey, welcome everybody. Dr. Drew After Dark, 818 And of course, the email is drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. We appreciate them. Keep them coming and support the people that support us. Today, the guest is Moses Storm from straight in from Michigan. Yeah. Originally. Originally, originally from Michigan. Originally. Where should we send people? You've got so much God. stuff. You've done all the comedic acting. You've done regular acting. You stand yeah. up, obviously. Uh, I think stand up and acting is probably the main thing that I do main. right now. I feel like where does should the we money send people to a from? website or? Um, I think I, I use social media. It feels I don't know for whatever reason my generation the personal website is is it feels like that, it's dated. Thing. They don't do that anymore. Yeah, even a card. Be like, well, uh, a piece of paper. What do you do? I stop. I had cards and I never. I gave out two, and then I stopped. Yeah, I'm not a out. card person either. I never was. It seems, it's it seems weird. It's odd. It's odd. Yeah. I think it was like what was it? Uh, Mitch Hedberg is like, here's a little piece of trash with his his joke about it. But uh, yeah, so just Moses Storm across Instagram, TikTok, everything. Just one word? Yeah. Storm like. And no one else wants that name. So I never have to be like Moses Storm, one, two, three. So you have a really interesting story. Do you mind getting into it a little bit? It's fascinating. Not at all. So you started in Kalamazoo, Michigan, right? Mm -hmm. And then you kind of traveled, <laughs> right? Yeah. And it was your parents. They they were interesting people. They were super religious. Very religious. The yeah. kind of religious where they're like, other religions are not going hard enough. We can do our. We could do this better. And, and we could be more was extreme. It the way or something is that what they? So, uh, y yes, it was. Yes and no. I mean, well, you're going to get a lot of confusing answers I, today. You, you, uh, that's I, I love it. So it gives me a chance to dig in a little further. So, so, so it was the way something made up. So my parents helped start a. A, their own religion that was a mixture of Judaism and Catholicism. They helped start it. Yes. So it was actually started by my uncle on my mom's side. My before they got involved? Before, yes, before they got involved. Well, even before my dad got involved, because my mom was the one that was really into it. Dad's more passive. Uh, a person who is very conflict Adverse he, his voice, so he kind of went along with it so, versus now, him so, being like excited. So it was your mom's uncle, right? Your great yeah. uncle, and and was it in Michigan, like a local thing in Michigan? Yes. And he was, was in Michigan. His origin story is like he w he played for Michigan State, and he was like a star running back, and then he got hurt, and then God Himself came onto the football field and said, "Your your whole career is over. Your identity as a football player, this is jock. It's over." What was the injury? Uh, I think he tore his ACL. Was a head injury or something? Wasn't well. The more we get into this, the more I'm like, oh, we're talking about CTE, <laughs> Drew. I think this is a hundred percent CTE. It has that quality, but it, but it which also... is impressive for him. If he started it, like good for you. If you get followers, the embarrassing thing is my parents being like, this guy with CTE is onto something. <laughs> this guy with the massive brain bleed. Yeah. We should we should give up our that... entire possessions, our home, and uh, move follow, into that a brain follow, follow that guy. Follow that guy. Well. I will tell you, it's not the first time human have done stuff like that. Yes. In fact, I think you ought to get a hold of Matt and Trey. I, I have a follow-on for the Book of Mormon. Yeah. It could be you guys. Oh, my God. I So I do look at cults. This is probably the most embarrassing thing. Like you look at these, like, Mormonism, which they've transcended cult, now they're into religion. Right. And, and there's a sociologist out there, I forget his name right now, it's like Weiss or something. He chronicled where religions come from and yeah. they usually start as a cult or he calls it cult anyway and then they graduate into sect and then religion and it's the best and thing then that they fight happen. with other religions it, it, right and then you start holy wars and then those people start getting elected <laughs> so the best thing that could happen is your cult could become a religion uh, uh the great consolation prize is if your cult gets a netflix special that's it's nice. Another, it's another way to like it's a Elevate consolation it. prize yeah, so good. i think that's what i'm going for with this, but but they were so profoundly unsuccessful. It never went well. 
There's no episode two of the documentary where it's like, and everyone was joining, and we had celebrities, and there was people doing yoga, and the numbers grew and grew. It shrank and shrank, and just was was 15 years of just suffering, a bit not going well, extreme poverty, strife, people throwing things at us, yelling at us on the street because we were yelling first. So, so they'd go out and proselytize. Is that what? Yeah. Happened? So, so the one they was called the way originally, but then that was, I, that was the CTE gentleman's way. Yes. yes. Okay. He was technically calling it the way, yeah. but it was based on the King James version of the Bible. Heavy focus on the Book of Revelation. Mm. The the fire brimstone. God's uh, okay. gonna doomsday call. The, 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 bo- the one it. book that everyone is not sure actually was part of the Bible. <laughs> right. Like, is this attack on after? They, they could tell you, like, you know, you're like lying and retelling a story. You can tell it's boring yeah. and add things on. Yeah, sure. They did like live readings of the Bible and then someone panicked and like, and then, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the earth opens up and they get swallowed. <laughs> so really heavy focus on uh, the book of Revelation. I, growing up as a kid, I was always like, oh, God's going to end the world Without exaggerating, like, oh, maybe in like 30 days from now. Did you have a day set? And would you have a rapture, anticipate the rapture? Or? No. You, that you, is the one saving grace. They wouldn't go in the backyard and sit on lawn chairs and wait for the rapture. Okay. I don't understand that kind of confidence, though, because it is a very common cult thing where <laughs> you will pick a date yeah, to humiliate no. yourself on. <laughs> like, you know it's not so, going to happen. So, uh, yeah. Or, or is the idea that they're going to manifest... No, they believe something's coming. You you had the good sense to question things, but a lot of people yeah. go right with it. So they never had a hard date, but it was always like very vague. Like, oh, it's, it's coming. You know, you've talked to people with addiction problems. They're like, you know, they're vague on their plans. Yes. What they're going to do. So it was, it was all was that. There, was there addiction in the family? Is that? I wish. Okay, that would explain it at least. I wish. It's a very insensitive thing to say because of how much pain addiction caused. Later, yes, with my siblings. Yeah. Um, How many kids were there problems? being five. Car- five kids being carted yeah. around? <gasps> oh my goodness! Yes, and uh, so yeah, there, I wish there was addiction because I would have more answers. Yes, I for understand. this stuff of like, oh, it makes sense that evil fentanyl got yeah. it, but it's just like adults with bad ideas. <laughs> um, five yeah. siblings all in a bus, not like a HDTV show Did- converted bus or even the studio, just like a old Greyhound bus that we could kind of afford, ripped the seats out of, and then my dad tried to build it up into a, a mo- motor, mobile home and um, didn't really work that well. Wasn't the best. Were there and, just five cots on the floor or something? Five uh, He built bunk beds, actually. Okay. But he forgot to measure for the height of uh-huh. a mattress uh-uh. when he built the bunks. So there's about two inches of clearance from oh. your nose to the unsanded oh. top part oh. of the bottom bunk. So we would travel around that, and the idea was to spread the word of uh, this this cult Again, by street preaching, going out with large neon signs that say, like, you're headed for hell, church is wrong, government's wrong, and... Um, oh, I got that right. Any organized religion is wrong, priest, pastor, and, rabbi. And did they, did they have a following at one point? No. It just kept shrinking. So there was three families total, and I, there's five kids in mine... Five kids in the other family that was Texas based, and then eight kids in my my great uncles. Uh, so they they just like made members. But to my knowledge, I I cannot think of anyone that they recruited. And it's a really abrasive way to because we're literally outside with neon signs outside of like uh, Lollapalooza or Spring Break in Panama City, Florida, yelling at people. And so th- those guys still exist, but they're not, they are spinoffs, so they're not part of the, the way? Uh, no, so the way came along, They uh, and a way more successful cult came along called the way. Oh. So my parents had to drop the name. Oh. And in lieu of like renaming it, they didn't have the confidence to do that. So they're just like, it was called, it would be nothing. <laughs> we were going to say, I was like, oh, so you called nothing? No, nothing. There's no name. There's no way to follow up on this. There's no way. And would There's you a landing be, page. Would you be one of the yelling people? Would you? Yeah, uh, which is adorable because we'd have to do it at two. It was considered age two. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So it was considered blessed. If, like the younger you could do it, the more you could uh, witness for God. And it, it's not just isolated to street preaching with the neon signs, passing out pamphlets. Sometimes you'd be forced where I would feel my back being pushed, and we're in a Walmart. 
my mom would go up and tell that woman that she's headed for hell. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? And what was the youngest at which you had done that? Uh, two. Oh, I was imagine? and I was like being rewarded. It was like this reward system. Like, wow, he's so articulate at two. You're yeah. so you're back. You're smart. Could you imagine right now a two year old coming up to you, or even a five year old, ten year old? I would be so disarmed because it's, a two year olds one they hide behind their mom's knee. Yeah. they don't come up to you. It so would be wild. Like, Hi, little buddy. Yeah. yeah. And I have a speech impediment as a, as a two year old. So like, you are hell for hell. <laughs> <laughs> that was adorable. Terrifying message. Wow. Yeah. And, and so there were 18 kids amongst the yeah. three families. Did anybody stay with it? Nobody stayed with it. <laughs> or are the, are the adults all? Well, I don't talk to my um, great uncle and his kids, which are now like they're in their 30s and 40s yeah. now. Um, and it's really odd because we were so isolated from the world. We weren't allowed to have any friends, girlfriends, oh boyfriends. Um no outside contact because why would you make a friendship because these people are part of satan they're going to corrupt you and this is and all going to be over you're on the move anyway yeah yeah you're in your your van also it's it's the mid 90s so there's not the oh internet gosh. or cell phones yet so uh. the message is really getting diluted there's no cohesive message there's no meeting point like even Jehovah's Witnesses, they at least have all those shit ton of meetings that they go to. Right. So you can stay on brand. So <laughs> stay on brand. <laughs> but so what happened to your mom? Is she still out there doing it? So she was the one. She was very popular in high school. Uh, homecoming queen was in very in shape. Yeah. So I I think after high school, when she because she, she got pregnant. Ah. Uh, my dad. They didn't. They weren't in love. They got pregnant. They were not in love. Not in love. Did they no. end up in love in any way? So I don't... It's hard because I don't know how much is my mom shit talking and how much is reality, but my dad was was gay when they oh. met. And I know it gets so messy, <laughs> but so religious that he couldn't accept it. It was seen as this great sin. He hated himself for that. Did, did, was she aware of this or is this something yes. that came out later? And as a very attractive... Uh, person in high school, Lisa conquered that small town was like the greatest challenge. To, to got, convert this guy. I got the star of the football team. If I could get that gay guy. Oh, I see. So, and the gay guy and and convert him to straight? Is that one of her little... Yes. Oh, because okay. he wanted it too. Well, he, he thought he wanted it. To be like, I'm, I'll, Help me. I'll cure it. Yeah. If I just do it, then I'll that'll be a good... Just pray the gay away. Yeah. You know, like, like, like broccoli. Like, you don't know until you try. So, so then uh, the first time that they had sex, they got pregnant. Wow. If it weren't so yeah. sad, it would be hysterical. But right? It's, it's so it sad. It is funny because yeah. it is sad. And, and it's also, I, I really have concerns about people that, well, is she, was she preying on him, do you think? Or I don't know. Or she really just caught up in a religious thing. And I guess I'm speculating a lot. It's unfair to yeah. say that's what she was doing. Yeah. But, but I think just what I know about archetypes of people and making broad brushstrokes, yes. I would say, like, oh, yeah, this is someone that was getting validated for their looks, um, had really conquered this small town. because Ca she's, this small town was Kalamazoo or somewhere yeah. else? Okay. It was before Pfizer really put yes. them on the map, mm. Kellogg's. But but she's incredibly charismatic. If you met her right now, she, you'd be like, that woman is great. Uh, she's intelligent. She's kind. She's funny. So charismatic. So charming. She should have been the leader. So of the, of the way of the way. Yeah, yeah. Well, she kind but, of was. It sounds like she dragged way, everybody in, out in our sect. I mean, you're in a little our family sect. sect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, keep going. So she's able to convince my dad to go along with that. Um, they they have a baby. There was no question of like, should we get... I guess they get... need you a little closer to the mic. They, they never thought like, oh, should we, you know, keep the baby? Meaning, it was who, just... Was that you? No, that was my oldest sister. Okay. I'm, I'm the youngest. Okay. Five. So it was just, let's, how soon can we get a wedding dress before the baby bump starts showing? Yes. It was just no question. And then the, the grandparents, did you know them? Uh, yes, my grandparents. Yeah, so they're very Catholic, my mom's side. Were they freaked out about this sect? They, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh. Oh. So and my and my mom would like yell at them on the phone, you're headed for hell, oh. and thank you for sending that money. <laughs> 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 so yeah, they. so we were like cut off from them for a very long time. 
unless we desperately needed money, which would come up all the time. Mm-hmm. And then and then we would come crawling back. But would that both sets of grandparents would were Catholic and sources of support? Uh, Jewish on my dad's side. Oh. But 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 practicing Jews don't think you're Jewish if your dad is Jewish. Sometimes. I was Jewish enough to go on birthright. Oh, yeah. We get a free trip yeah, to my Israel did that, yeah. and a bunch of propaganda mixed yes, in there yes. to take out the Palestinian people. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm Jewish enough for the free trip, but Jews would say I'm not Jewish. Also was your circumcised mom twice. Your, twice? Oh, hang on a second. So that's because your mom isn't Jewish. You're, yeah. 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 Circumcised twice? So they were anti-government anti-public school system, private school system, education. So I've never been to school Your mom ever. Your mom treated, uh, uh, taught everybody, right? The whole group? Yes. And, <sighs> well, the, even that's generous. There was no school. <laughs> I, I couldn't there read was no or write until I was 16. Oh, no kidding. <gasps> uh, <sighs> what did she think was going to happen? I, uh, the imagine? world's going to be over. There's yeah, no accountability. Right. It's like people like rack up credit card debt when they're alone. It's like, I got no family. So, uh, and they also don't believe in, in, in uh, modern medicine. Oh, boy. So she's here now. She's going to roast you about your <laughs> degree, <laughs> Dr. Drew. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So no hospitals. We are not allowed to go to hospitals. She would fascinate safe. the hell out of me. I mean, she really would, I'm sure. I, I would be honestly very interesting uh, for you two to talk. Yeah. Because you're so level-headed and you don't get very emotional in mm. arguments. And mm. I think... She could out emotion you in any place, but I think you just by logic and just showing the empathy that you show. Yeah, yeah. Because I yeah, I was familiar with 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 Loveline, uh, just calling in and people would be in these manic states. Or how, how did your how did you manage to listen to Loveline in the world you lived in? Yes, because we were not not allowed to watch TV yeah. and consume any media. Liquid IV, the number one powdered hydration brand in America, is now available sugar-free. Years in the making, Hydration Multiplier Sugar-Free uses a proprietary zero-sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners. Three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drinks, plus eight vitamins, nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone. Water it's good, but you need solute. You need something in it to hydrate. Keep your daily routine exciting with three new flavors, white peach, green grape, and lemon lime. Again, there are no artificial sweeteners, zero sugar, proprietary amino acid, allulose blend for sweet taste without the calories. It doesn't raise blood sugar that you might get from, from sugar, right? This is sugar-free. Liquid IV is also non-GMO, free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Now sugar-free. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code Dr. Drew at checkout. That is 20% off anything you order when you use promo code Dr. Drew at liquidiv.com. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients, seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the trips to the grocery store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Take a bite out of summer with HelloFresh. From chef-crafted seasonal recipes to their new fresh and fit summer menu, HelloFresh brings flavor right to your door. Pre-portioned ingredients help cut down on food waste while step-by-step instructions make cooking a breeze, not a chore. My whole family's been into it. HelloFresh gets that you want options when it comes to what to make for dinner, not just the same old thing all the time. That's why they offer 40 recipes to choose from every single week. So you'll never get bored and you can always find something new to try and love. We just went through this with HelloFresh. We had a pre-portioned setup. My son made some of it. I made some of it. My, my wife made some of it. And the meals were delicious. Couldn't, I could never do this, anything like that, without the, without the guidance of HelloFresh. Go to HelloFresh.com slash DrDrew50 and use that code DrDrew50 for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash DrDrew50. Use code DrDrew50 for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. So uh, at the point where the cult had disbanded and was really disorganized and my parents broke up, we were all uh, secretly living in a uh, windowless garage with no running water and pooping in trash bags. That's a detail you needed. 
I did. And we had a little radio that we had found in the trash, and my my two older brothers and I would secretly listen to. But how the secretly? Show. If every there are six of you living in this shed, she lived with her new boyfriend in the main house part, what? and then we were in the detached garage. <laughs> I need you to talk to her. We're gonna get her on speakerphone. Oh, oh my god! We're gonna do an intervention. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So were she there was, other kids living in the house, like his kids or anything? No. No, the new boyfriend was uh, 25, and she How was, was she? 39 mm-hmm. at the time. So that's not, you know, not too the crazy. worst. But still, they were like, we're going to start a band in Venice Beach. You were in L.A. at that point? Yeah. and and But it wasn't like the Venice Beach now where it's like a Whole Foods that's outside. Yeah, this yeah. Was like, Real, there were, well, it was actually sort of gang-ridden back in those it days. It was. So there was yeah. gunshots every night, and we were the worst part of Venice Beach where if you live on an alley... That's the worst because pe- they do drug deals down there. People run from the cops down there. We multiple shootings. Uh, but, but she had the five kids in a in a single room. In a and, single room. And didn't the, somebody wonder why these kids aren't in school or take issue All with it? All the time. You'd be in grocery stores, and and from as early as I can remember, people were like one, your kids are so well behaved. Which that is, was the main comment. Which is hard to imagine. You know, you, they, you should have been coming unglued, right? And screaming and yelling and. But it was, I think it was the fear of the religion. Oh, my god. So there goodness. wasn't, like, the usual, if you see a kid, they're, like, grabbing things. Can I have this? From a very early age, had a scarcity mindset, was very aware that we were poor, was also very afraid of acting out or doing anything that was, you know, too big or, wow. or seen, like, as against a religion. And then, yes, constantly we were being called out by other parents and just adults saying, why aren't your kids where kids are? <laughs> <All right. laughs> why are they here? Because also, why gonna, are you guys in the dumpster we're gonna behind be, the grocery store? Right. And uh, by the way, we're going to be the Partridge family. Yeah. And did that happen? That happened all the time. No, no. Did they start the band or whatever they were no, doing? No, I wish. Like <laughs> all these things, even the addiction, all these things would, would help my adult life now to have some reference point. To did your like, dad, they, so they divorced, right? Yeah. Isn't that going to send them to hell also? Right? And you're not allowed to remarry? They made an exception, I guess. They, I and guess they made a, an Did and, that poor man get a chance to be gay? <laughs> For a briefly, and then now he is back with a wife that is so similar to my mom. Wow. Meaning my mom and her do not get along at all. Perfect. They're, she's a very, very bullheaded woman. Where's the pants in that relationship? Trying to get him straight again, literally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> scare him straight through, through wow. love. <laughs> wow, this is such so a... So circumcised twice. I hope you write a book or something. What do I start? It's too many unusuals. Two. I, it, 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 you start with... Your earliest memory of walking up to a woman and telling her she's going to be yeah. going to hell. That, that's where you start. <laughs> okay. And then you go from there. And then I mean, we go to get the second circumcision. I mean, yeah, yeah. tell me about that. Okay, well, so then we uh, were in Ohio at this time when I was born. Mm-hmm. This was born. So then we go to a, a Jewish temple. And I guess if you make an appointment, if you're not going to go to a hospital, the only other place you could do a, a circumcision. Get a bris. Uh, yeah. So we we went to that, and it was the rabbi was thirty three. It was his first time doing it. Oh shit! He had a little bit of ceremonial wine. He kept. He was still so nervous. He kept. He had more wine, and then he got to the point where his hand was shaking so much. Is this what your parents described? Yeah, it's like why do I need to know this story? Yeah. <laughs> why, too, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but um, so then we they had to drive four and a half hours to the next temple to finish the job because they were they were making him more nervous by saying, "Hey, your hand's shaking a lot. Are you sure that's supposed to happen? Are you sure you're supposed to do finish that?" Finish the job. So they, I guess, he cut half of it off. This sounds like a love line call. So yes. you ever microwave a hot dog? Um, <laughs> and it splits. <laughs> yes. No, that's your penis. That's so your penis. Cracking your dick. It's so, more of like a C squared tentacle thing. So, <laughs> so did it turn out okay? It turned out okay. okay. You're young enough where it's like there's no. There's stars something wrong or with the story. Thing. It's not quite working yet. Yeah. I, I think the first guy turned back right away. That's yeah, he turned bet. back right away. Yeah, okay. All anyway, right. so yeah, I think I was just young enough to be like, oh, it's going to heal fine. Yeah. And I also think he knew what he was doing. He was just nervous by my parents, like, over his shoulder. Telling him he was going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, it's just this whole Jewish faith. It's a lie. Can, can you read and write now effectively? I can, but now when I'll do acting jobs, you have to yeah. do a table read where you essentially yep. get the script for the first time, yep. the more secret of the show is, and you have to cold read for the first time. Yep. So I will do my best now, and I'm just a little bit confident enough as an adult to ask them, 
hey, I really struggle with reading and writing. Um, on top of that, I'm dyslexic and dysgraphic. So can I please get the script in advance? I won't leak it. Just so I don't want to ruin some comedy writer's joke by butchering it and stumbling through the word boat. Yeah, yeah. So there are uh, a lot of people like yourself, m more than people recognize. Adam Carolla was like you. He had a hippie mom that didn't send him to school. He went yeah. to some sort of, he said it was a hippie school where he threw dirt clods till sixth grade. And That's, then, that, they still get an F for yeah. that? <laughs> and when he you went, got an F in dirt. Yeah, and it, when he went to school, he was like sixth or seventh grade, then he was called, you know, delayed or retarded or whatever, you know, what they used to call it, and uh, was put in ceramics classes the rest of the way through high school. And so when I got to him, he didn't really read. I mean, he kind of could struggle through stuff, but it, he'd have to look at things well ahead of time and sort of memorize it. Yeah. And he's good now. It's, it's, it's surprising to me how much people can catch up. Uh, well, that's would be interested if you knew anything about this, like how much that is in my head now. So if you, I've told yourself that you don't read and write well, right? And yeah. It's this constant anxiety. Yeah. So when I go down to, to read a piece of paper, now it's all anxious. this yeah. self-talk that you've done yeah. about, hey. And, and I'm sure you have some, you have to have some, some handicap with it because there are developmental windows when it's easier. You know, it's automatic and you're, you're kind of have to work at it. I, I'm, I'm but very delayed in, yes, in anything school, but very advanced in yelling at adults. Yes, which so, is thus the comedy. That, the, you, the stands, that's basically what comedy sta is. Standing, standing is weird, it's just a guy yelling. Standing on stage and yelling at the audience. Yeah. And, and uh, how did acting happen? It was honestly the only thing I could do. Mm. That's like a bullshit thing that people say in my industry all the time. Like, stand-up is the only thing I could do. It's like, no, you could work at Taco Bell. Yeah. I couldn't. You need a GED for most jobs, most entry-level jobs. You need some form of education. You, you need to be able to read the menu. Uh, I guess you can wash dishes, but even then, you have to have some social skills. And we are not socialized, which I do think is the biggest education that I missed out on. And, and does your mom express any regrets, or do you, did any of the kids come down on her for... Uh... Sort of. <laughs> I was recently talking to her when I was about to put up the HBO special. And I don't know how she got on this, but she was just waxing out loud about her regrets in life. She goes, you know, if I have three regrets in life, one would be spending so much time in the sun. It just ages <laughs> oh, you so fast. <laughs> and then I guess second, it would be not sending your kids to school. Okay. Well, thanks, Mom. <laughs> and then she never got to three. <laughs> I think she's also dyslexic. But and, but yeah, it, it, I think they, she's got a lot of regret now because now she has an empty nest syndrome she's, and she's seen the pain that it has caused, especially my older siblings. Yeah, they're We're, struggling. Yeah, everyone's leveled out now and is a good parent, but... Is um, a good parent? You mean they all have kids? They all have kids. Oof. Yeah, because I don't, I don't... This is why I had to stop myself from having kids because a lot of the uh, idea was like, I'm going to get my childhood right. Yes, be careful. I'm gonna show them. Yeah, be careful. Whenever, whenever, whatever the compensation is, you know, whatever we're making right from our own childhood, it's always not good for the kids. You know, it's a it's a compensation. It feels like too much pressure to put on the kid. It's never. Yeah. I'm never gonna feel all right, and it's a bad reason. Yeah. But but yes, I think as early as as maybe four years ago was like yes, I definitely want kids, and then recently came to this embarrassing realization. Well, you yeah, could just try to fix I mean, something. Yeah, but you could also realizing that maybe try not to compensate at all. Maybe. Yeah. Is it enough to not address the behavior and just acknowledge it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but it's it's better than you know being you know absolutely sort of invested yeah. in. I'm going to make this right, and you know you know yeah. that's going to go. So then, so then my older siblings they had uh, obviously problems with addiction. Your older siblings, and yeah. and are they sober now? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Everybody out in Michigan? Are they out in Los Angeles? Where, everybody Everyone kind of spread out since we spent so much time traveling. Uh. The world feels pretty small. So New Mexico, Portland, Oregon, and, some Florida. And do they all stay in relationship with your mom and your dad? Or yes. They, sort of, they do. So that's good. I mean, they, they say well, they haven't sort of been angry and rejecting of everybody. No. I mean, it's taken some years to come back. Yeah. And then still now it wanes because... It was very hard lines in the sands over. My mom would cut her own parents off. Because uh, they were going to hell. Because they were going to hell. Mm -hmm. So then now we don't feel any guilt towards 
cutting her off. Oh, that's, that's interesting. How, it's always good when uh, the parents that are supporting you financially are the ones that you're most pissed off. <laughs> off at. You know, 100%. as somebody pointed out, Adam pointed out to me the other day that All in the Family, do you have a TV show? No TV. All, I don't know. the no Family, references. guys, All in the Family. He pointed out, he goes, you know, he, Meathead and the daughter. The, the, he was the hero, you know, the Rob Reiner character was the hero. He was, he was, he was the one that knew what was right and what was wrong and what was, you know, appropriate for the age and the racism and the misogyny. Yet they were living in her father's house and he was the one paying the bills and he was the one paying the taxes. So uh, that, interesting. That, that is exactly interesting. Life. Ariel, what's going on? Hi, Drew. Hi, How are you guys today? We are great. What's up? You're on with. Hi. Go ahead. I'm going to try and unpack this as quickly as I can. I'm curious if you ever feel like it's worth it to address what you think is medical negligence and how to go about that. Um, our situation is that I saw an OBGYN first pregnancy, wasn't notified until I was 20 weeks pregnant that I had a bicornate uterus that they knew I had at my nine-week ultrasound. Um, I was never treated as high risk. Things just weren't sitting right with me with it. So I sought out another provider that I couldn't get established with until I was 33 weeks pregnant. Oh boy. So their scheduling and demands, I had to wait until I was 36 weeks pregnant oh for God. an ultrasound with them because they're like, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. And? So at that point, we discovered a severe intrauterine growth restriction oh because boy. of my uterus uh, less than two percentile mm. and that led to uh, you know all the specialists the biophysical profiles ultimately having to go to a different city to deliver via c-section that week um, after delivery we found out our son had a TEF so we had surgery and then a two-week NICU stay um, so we're living under a mound of medical debt right now. Mm. And the original GYN wants 1700 bucks from us still. And we're kind of like, well, we don't feel like you met the standard of care, but we don't know where to go. Yeah. Uh, uh well, a malpractice attorney, right? That's what I'm thinking. I just wonder, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm pretty traumatized from the whole experience. So well, I'm like, if we bring a lawyer into it, is it worth our time, the emotional energy? Yeah, it, it, it is. It is. It's awful, and and I hate, you know, I hate malpractice stuff. It's very, it's just an awful thing. But the fact that they're pursuing you for the money after sort of suboptimal care that's what bothers me here but how much can we actually do retroactively is it still like you ate the meal at the olive garden and you send it back like that wasn't good y y yes i mean you you the, the point is that there was bad outcome there's a bunch of bills because of the bad outcome their the choices they made figured into the bad outcome mm -hmm. and at very minimum they should have the sort of the courtesy to let the bill go are, are you a medical patient or medic uh, sorry a medicaid uh, medicaid rather no we're private private insurance too i mean you know, now the so just to you understand the bicornea uterus does not make that big a deal in the pregnancy unless the the implantation was way up in the cornu okay Sometimes the bicornea, the, you know, you still get the middle of the uterus where the implantation can occur, and it can be kind of normal. So do we know where the implantation was? Was it up in the corner, and that, that's why there was the, the intrauterine growth retardation, or did something else cause it? Yep, he was completely allocated to the top left side of my yeah. uterus. Okay. Um, so I that's... also had, um, due to where he implanted a super small placenta. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's a mess. It was... My wife, my wife had a pregnancy. She's not bicornuate, but she had a uh, corneal pregnancy. Our first uh, fertility yeah. campaign that had to be evacuated because it was not going to go. That, so. That's different because my sister had an uh, ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic. Where it's born in the the, the the tube. The tube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That has, okay. That that's, can kill people that's too. That's so painful. That that can and it's sort of the cornea is sort of up near the to where the tubes come in, and it's kind of the same thing. Things rupture, and it can be very devastating. And the baby's not going to make it either way. 
I actually had our provider um, in my C-section take photos of it because I was so curious um, if it was actually deformed, and the pictures are insane. Show, um, show us a bicornate uterus, guys. You can, you can, uh, so so Moses can take a look at that. There it is. Well, no, there it is. It's so, sort of a split uterus kind of thing. Uh, yeah, more that one on the left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you see how if it goes up the way up in the top there, that's not enough room. If it gets in the middle, you're kind of okay. Right? Kind of right. get it? You know what you're looking at there? I have no idea. Okay. I've never <laughs> seen this before. This is against our religion and God. That's the that's the mark of the beast right there. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the devil's I saw, eyes there. I saw, I saw Moses is like, whoa, guys, lies over a little bit. And I'm like, the oh. crest of the labia. That's, that's so, devil stuff. Maybe we should get a real picture of real uterus. So, so he gets, yeah, uh, this so is So we can really great. bring Moses and all the a, way into Beelzebub's <laughs> world. And a singular dick that's not split in two, so, a bifurcated. So there's just regular uteruses and stuff. There's a real uterus down there. All right, anyway. So okay. I, I don't know, my dear. I, I Again, like I said, I, I totally sympathize with you not wanting to deal with it. I sympathize with how awful malpractice generally is. But I'm sort of PO'd that they're going coming after you still with bills when you've had such a traumatic experience and a bad outcome that they figured into it. At least they could discharge that. And maybe you want to, you know, call the bill collector there or the office there and go, hey, you know, I'm thinking about a malpractice case here. Maybe you don't want to keep pursuing this. What do you think? Okay. Okay. I'm, yeah. Hey, how's the baby now? Uh, he's doing great. I'm holding him right now. He, mm. he so thank God, little, right? I mean, thank yeah. God that everything. And, and you said he had some sort of, he had a congenital problem. I didn't quite hear what it was. He did. He had a tracheoesophageal fistula. Oh, that's nasty. Ah. So all the esophageal content gets into the lungs, but they can repair that easy. So that's good. And no one so, can prove that that was related to all the other shit you were dealing with. So great. It all turned out okay. And so I, I understand why you don't want to sort of b pursue aggressively. And, and by the way, the, you know, the amount of the funds you're going to get are be relatively limited since everything turned out okay. But still, them coming after you for the bills, I, I hate that when they, people do that. Yeah, especially if you're thinking about uh, taking on attorney fees yeah, yeah, to yeah. do it. And at uh, the yeah. end of the day, it's like, oh, that's what you signed up for. It feels uh, like they're... They have more power in this situation. All right, I've got a bunch of questions here. Oh, I had some good ones that I was that I, th that I thought would convert you uh, all the way into the bowels of hell. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is uh, this is interesting. Here's a radiologist, Jafar. Doctor Doctor Drew, can hey, you sir, hear me? I do. Congratulations on radiology. Are you uh, doing general radiology or interventional? Anything specific? You're on with me and Moses Storm, of course. Uh. Diagnostic radiology oh, practicing in, in the early it. suburbs. Love it. Uh, graduate, graduate fellowship back, fellowship back in uh, in uh, July. So very much enjoying the attending life. Um, the the reason I'm calling is that I feel like, and again, we're just after the match season, and you can go into the the whole process of that. Um, and residency and fellowship kind of puts healthcare professionals through the mean grinder. I think it's easy to develop really bad habits yep. and you being, I mean, I'm 30, I'm 33. Yep. Um, uh, you're a little, you've got more experience than I do in terms of managing, uh, being both, uh, and attending and getting better uh, personal habits than the kinds, I don't want to say self-destructive, but the kinds of habits that can develop, that can yep. develop during residency and fellowship, um, yep. poor stress and time management, poor sleep habits. Yep. I did I all, I did all example, that. You don't, um, don't assume I didn't do it. I did all that. I, I got. I ended up, you know, not, not sleeping. You know, bar barreling through everything, and then roaring out into practice, sixteen hours a day for like ten years. And and I uh, was severe workaholism. Severe. I I don't know how my marriage held up through all that. Uh, so I I was yeah. Was, that's what I'm trying to get some perspective. Yeah, I was guilty as any, and then I was teaching, and I had a, and I had uh, leadership positions at hospitals and stuff, and I just kept going, going, going. You you get kind of kind of addicted to it. it it's it's hard to slow down when you just want to be good and do the right thing and be there all the time and do the best job and it, it, i don't i don't have any good advice advice really because it's it's sort of disingenuous since i did it myself except to say at very minimum 
you're going to have to slow down at some point. You're going to have to develop good practices because this is a marathon, not a sprint, and you can't you can't do this. For and eventually, your body will just shut yeah, you your down. Your brain, your body, your body like up. you're done. Yeah. Um, uh, are you talking about personal for yourself or for uh, how you train your residents and, and medical students? No, not not even not even that. I mean, I'm in private practice, and so the the idea of, of residents and medical students is is very tangential. It's more. I mean, I mean. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to fluff myself up too much because the reality is that, I mean, I'm a radiologist. I'm done work at four thirty, five o'clock. There are 90% of specialties that, that say, what the hell does this guy have to complain about? Um, but, um, but in terms of just like, of now that I have more free time than I did in training and, and obviously more money, I think the temptation is there's a possibility for the bad habits that develop during residency and fellowship to be either resolved with all of that new freedom or get worse with all of that new freedom and trying to find strategies on how to mitigate that more, more productively, because mm-hmm. obviously like, Oh, like I can, uh, I can fill in all, all the free time I have with, Oh, I'm just going to um, stay awake longer or I'm going to in, uh, indulge, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or I can, um, because I, I feel like, I mean, since I started, uh, since I graduated med school, I mean, put on the, like 80 pounds, I, oh, I had goodness. three kids instead of one, love them to bed. Oh, but, my. um, my, my temp- temper is uh, a bit more on, on a, ha- on a hair trigger just cause yeah. more responsibility and, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just, just trying to figure out productive and, well, and better habits to do. Yeah. I, I completely, I just so sympathetic to what you're going through. There's this weird, I've, I've, I'm of two minds simultaneously. One is, mm-hmm. Oh my God, I know how this is. And with all the kids and you just got to bear down and get through this period of your life. You just got to bear down. I, I ended up in therapy. I ended up in the therapist's office by the time I was 33 uh, for it's exactly what you're talking oh, about. Oh, What's that? That's how old I am. Yeah, I, that's that's when my wife called me one day and said, uh, you need to see someone. I, and of course, I was working in doing, in addition to doing hospital care and outpatient medicine, I was doing this work in the psychiatric hospital. And so I was very, you know, tuned into all that stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. And she yeah. goes, no, no, no. You need to go. And I, my hair stood up in the back of my neck. Right. And I thought, oh, she is serious. She and I, I, I said, okay, I'm putting the phone down. I'm going to call somebody. And I did that. And it was the greatest thing I ever did. But Jafar, it, it is, I, I had trouble. I'll tell you what I, what I worked on in therapy that, that uh, got worked through. Perfectionism, yeah. uh, like crazy. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> per- perfectionism and inability to delegate. I just couldn't delegate. I'd do everything myself. And uh, it was it was rough because of that. I have that at much lower stakes. But yeah, can't <laughs> delegate. You're rewarded for how much you work. You get yeah. praised for it. Yeah, so yeah. it's hard to say that it's a bad thing, even though it is overwhelming. It's, it's, it's too really, much. really, in medicine, it's taken to an art level. It, it they, is. It's like actual it. people's lives. Mine's yeah, like a they, bad show. It's like but you're, yeah. not, you're not really a doctor if you're not suffering yourself. It's, right. all, it's almost like that. But but it, Jafar, I couldn't have done it without without psychotherapy. So, you know, I can, it's easy for me to say, you know, uh, start working out and, you know, get on a proper diet and make sure you're sleeping adequately and, and time for yourself and time for yourself and your wife. And of, of course, of course, you know all that. Doing it is a whole different matter. It sounds like more to do. If you already are, are overworked and stressed, working out, doing these things, that sounds like another task it's, you're it's, adding to the to-do list. And especially when you have other things you'd rather be doing. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, Jafar, I I really glad you called because it just it brings me back to my own stuff. I have deep empathy for what you're experiencing. Um, do me a favor though, also keep teaching. We, we, I'm I'm really concerned about. Uh, oh, I love it. Good. I, I'm very I concerned have enough, about. I have enough teaching that it keeps it keeps that part part of it satisfied. And that I can it, it is a really the, good part of it. Aspect. Yeah, it's very important part of the story. And gosh, I think back to some of my radiology colleagues and what they helped me understand and. For some reason, neuroradiology I was fascinated with, and I just am grateful to this day some of the stuff that they taught me, and and it's just a piece of the puzzle that that you got to keep giving back to the generations and this next generation of physicians. I'm kind of worried about, just worried a little bit. Yeah. So here's another thing we do on this show: we look at videos. Okay. Okay. You ready, Moses? Yeah. All right. So we're gonna look at uh, some TikToks to kind of warm you up. Okay. All right. 
Are my husband and I polyamorous or ENM, ethically non-monogamous? It oh. turns out the label of my relationship matters to some, so you tell me. My husband and I have been together for 13 years and non-monogamous that entire time. We've been married for nine and have two kids together. We're hierarchical, so we put our relationship first if we ever feel like our marriage or our family is threatened. Luckily, we've never felt like anyone was a threat to us. Anyone we've dated or been with has just added to our lives. Most of our relationships have been oh casual, God. especially early on. Okay, we had okay. friends with benefits, had uh, fun at swingers clubs and tended to why is he not in the video didn't want serious <laughs> why is just she saying yeah, he's banging escalator. his girlfriend but right now yeah. my husband and I, we <laughs> have outside three his serious relationships yeah. outside of our marriage oh we God. date separately and we refer to the people that we're okay. dating as either our boyfriend or girlfriend respectively those three people met our kids one person came on a vacation with us and the relationships tended to last about a year or more and yes we fell in love with them we have no oh. rules on how long a relationship outside of our marriage can mm -hmm. last, but we do have a veto rule. We've only ever used it before a first date. We're reevaluating it because we don't think that it's necessary, but right now, theoretically, either of us can veto any person at any time. We respect the privacy of our partners. We don't share intimate details about other partners with each other. Right, the right, label right. isn't okay, going okay, to change okay. my mind. That was woman, just bragging. We've seen this one before, right? Yeah. I think the mere fact that you're you're making the video, you're trying to get approval from yes, people. Yes, and re rationalizing everything. The insecure attachment, uh, the jealousy yes, that comes up. I have yes. so many friends now that's like, we're poly, we're sex liberal, but then there's always problems in that relationship. It's always. I'm saying it can't work, but you are inviting so many problems, and clearly... You, if you're going to do this in, in this abandoned frozen wasteland, you are you're trying to get those comments. I say, you go, girl. You did it. Yeah, I, I, you were absolutely right. That, that, but I, whenever I hear people rationalizing, explaining things, that is not what you call authentic. That is not genuine. Yes. That is that's thinking, that's defensiveness, that's resistance, that's justifying, that's rationalizing, and that's not real. It's not real. It's not what the human is experiencing. Some of it's your own negative self-talk is in there, so too. You're supposed are... to experience it. You're convincing yourself you should experience. You want to convince everybody else, so you believe it. It's all kind of bullshitty. How now, often is it just one person's idea to be non-monogamous? Oh, my God, typically. It's, it's always that, right? Not always, not always. But it is very common that one person is dragged along. And because the, they love that person. I want to stay with you. I want to be with you. I guess I'll try this. One wants it to do it. The other accepts it. That's sort of the yeah. way it goes. Uh, these two sound like they're kind of both into it, whatever. And, I, you know, I, I had a couple that... A oh, was the camera moving? Or was it know. on a tripod? That know. would be very important for this relationship. If it's moving, he's filming. Oh. It's handheld. Mm -hmm. Then he's approving of all I, this. He, the videos tripod. I've seen her in the past, she's, she she seemed to be alone. Okay. Yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah why is she like, that far in the woods? He's with his girlfriend. That's why. <laughs> he's with his real family. Right. <laughs> She's one of the many girlfriends. But I, I had a, a couple friend of mine that divorced. They were getting, separating recently, and they were very into whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And they, they, you know, they loved each other and lasted a long time. And I just thought, well, maybe, maybe here's a couple for whom it works. Even them, even this couple yes. doesn't work. I, I knew a couple uh, in Brooklyn that they were going to sex parties. They were hosting sex parties. They were the entertainment. They were the people that the kindling of the fire that got it going for everyone else in their personal relationship. As cool and as open they are, they are not having sex. It's maybe hand jobs every once in a while, and then it became nothing. And that's it, pathetic. It's sad. It, yeah, and then so some of the videos you're trying to hold on to that identity and overcompensate. It's for all the lack compensation. Of, it's so much compensation. I, I wish it worked. It'd be great if this stuff was real and worked, and you could start a new sec for your mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but why? Am I exactly it. right. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work for humans. Humans are not wired up for this. Uh, what about? I see this something called puking from smoking, and we're going to bring Moses into the real your mom's yeah, house. Yeah, like, here we go. <laughs> it, it, like falling down, puking is one of the funniest things. Because it's, it's so ruined. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so he's smoking weed, right? Yeah, that's hyperemesis. That's yeah. cannabis hyperemesis. It usually. Have you thrown up in public? Uh. Like that around a social situation. That's it, it usually comes when you take a big hit and then they, they vomit right yeah, afterwards. Yeah, just one and then it, yeah, it's just too much smoke at one time. No, but that's the cannabis hyperemesis thing. That's that's what it is. What, what are you talking about? What the do you dog mean? calls that Thursday. <laughs> if you take a big hit, 
and yeah. vomit, uh-huh. that is the cannabis syndrome. It's not that he was coughing, 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 and then threw up as part of the coughing. He took a huge hit. I've seen this after dabs mostly when mm. people, here we go, conditionally used to repeat it. It's rare. It's a vomiting. It's rare. Not rare. It's very common. So it's not <laughs> the coughing. I'm learning something in yeah, real time. The coughing can do that. Okay. But that, those people are like cough, 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 and then vomit. This was boom, spontaneous vomit. My my daughter, after dabbing in my home, vomited all over the wall. She had no idea. Just like that, doesn't know it's coming. It just boom, it just comes. A projectile vomit because you feel like a cough, but what's happening is that one hole that's not the esophagus is relaxing too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know they don't know what causes the. They call it cannabis hyperemesis. It, it that is somewhat of a misnomer. It's not as though people with the cannabis syndrome vomit all the time yeah. or a lot even they just vomit regularly, regularly this video seemed like best case scenario to be throwing up in public they're in some back alley of like where they do a bad drug deal in yeah, a low budget where, action movie that's where they thought it was cool when he had a gigantic snot well, hanging out of his yeah, nose yeah that's what happened that day when they talk <laughs> about what happened today oh fucking Tyler threw up there you go have you thrown up in a in a um is, um, is official words a uh, doctor function you're at some fancy banquet. No, I'm just I'm like not, picturing a scene from Batman, but you're at some. I've not had black any. Tie. I've not had any embarrassing vomiting episodes that I can remember. No dates, nothing. There's never been an inappropriate not time. That like, not okay. that I remember. I all uh, in this room the other day was it with Rich Voss? We were looking at some stuff that almost made me throw. Up. <laughs> was it his career? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's look at Bert playing guitar. That's funny. Oh, someone's saying this is Bert Kreischer? Yes. It's just oh, the, my the, God. The belly it reminds us of Bert. Yeah. But that would be a shirtless great. on stage. That this, this would happen at a Bert show. He's a pretty good guitar player, though, right? Yeah. Anybody else bothered? You're, you're a young man. Any, anybody else bothered by the fact that people who play rock music should be like, in assisted living, <laughs> yeah, isn't that kind of Some of the Rolling Stones. It's hard to say, like how much of the drug use is aging them. But they're old, but they do look like the California raisins. Yeah, <laughs> and but even that guy. I mean, they, they they still think of themselves as they were when they were twenty two. And what is that? I don't think you have to grow up if you're a performer. I guess that's right, but I wondered if young people were bothered by it. It bothers me a little bit, but the, whatever. They can do what they want. But but if I were young, I'd be like, what the Yes, f- what the that f- age of that clip, exactly, yeah. that bothers yeah. us. Yeah. I think 10 years from that, uh, that, if he's 10 years older, then it's cool again. It's like, that old guy can get down. But oh this is God. like, a, this is teetering on sad. Okay, you've given me hope. All right, this hope So for you will get cooler later. I, when I hit, Drew <laughs> threw up on the show. So if I can like... Uh, you have a walker, then yeah, then, then, then it's it's cred. All right, interesting. yeah. I think you start doing TikTok pranks in okay. the next ten years. <laughs> so speaking of throwing TikTok, up on people, TikTok. Maybe we should head back to TikTok. See what's going on out there. Uh, I was with Bert on Sober October. Oh, oh my gosh, what is okay, this? Okay, this is tricky, honey. Is that what it so, looks like? So, hang on a second. Uh, so so, it looks like it's it's a tracheotomy. That's where tracheotomies are. But she, <sighs> what? <laughs> She's sending stuff down the esophagus and then yeah, out that hole. Because I have a different... terrible acid reflux. So what? How do these holes work down there? Well, well th- you have this the esophageal gastroesophageal junction, yeah. which has a it's a has a gasket, right? and it's like a like a sphincter almost. Sphincter. It is right? not almost. It is a sphincter. It is a sphincter. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and it, as you get older, it can loosen. But if you get acid up in the esophagus, it loosens also, so it makes it so it keeps going. Makes it worse. So and that's it keeps the hard making part. it worse. The more I get acid reflux, yeah. So you know, that's why you got to use the whatever you're, you're doing. Baking, baking soda. It tastes terrible. Take some Pepsi. Tums is fine. Take someone said on don't some. Don't work very well. Gaviscon, no. pretty good. Uh, take some. Just get forty milligrams of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi. Okay. It, and it, it, those it, medicines are safe again because a couple years ago Zantac had like Zantac. Some... I, don't, I never like Zantac because it's, it's an odd molecule and I've always stayed away from it. Oh, but it's a different formula than completely. The okay, completely. so Prilosec is the one. Zantac is closer to an antifungal medicine than to Pepsi, which is closer to Benadryl. This explains is... my chlamydia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pepsi, Pepsi is close to Benadryl. It's, it's really very mild. Medicine. But is it drowsy? What if I have a no, show and no, I get no, pop that and I'll fine. be fine? You're fine. You're fine. 
Oh my god! I'm the, I'm, if I horizontal after eating even four hours, then it's the worst acid ever. So she was throwing that diet coke down a hole. How? And, and coming out the it must be an esophageal sort of connection of some type. Why she would have an esophageal connection in her neck? I don't know. It's, or maybe she maybe it is something. Maybe she had a tracheal plug in that wasn't a, was a tracheostomy, and she has a way of shunting past the trachea to the neck. I, I, I wish it was it. water. I wish it wasn't, you know. Because usually, you know, tracheostomies go, go right into the trachea. You know, when you, okay. you put people's, stu- you just go from the skin to the trachea. You don't go to the esophagus. So weird. That's a good one, though. I like that. Odd. Clever. And that'll be used in the malpractice suit later for How about that? the doctor opening that for up. Ariel. What do you got here now? TikTok? Okay, we skipped right over. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Savage. Ooh. Oh my god! That's hard to watch. That's hard to watch. Uh, I I I can do puking, but the snot is a is a thing. I'm kind of with you. It's, it's my least favorite part of porn, which is like the cum comes out, like I, it just white stuff coming you. out of a body is yeah. disgusting. Well, it's all this mucopolysaccharide. Things it's not it's not and semen are the same thing essentially. It's that so that's my yeah. big connection there. Yeah. That's what the thing of like that's disgusting. Yeah. I don't know why that's the end of the porn. I like where your eyes are watering. I I, I, I that, yeah, it's really upset. <laughs> <laughs> this is your mom's house, uh, but yeah, I, I just feel the same way, and it's just like yeah, get it all over her, yeah, get uh, it all over. It's like no, yeah. cut that out. This guy's a gentleman. To prove, to prove that it came out. Moses is a gentleman, I tell you. Your mom's raised it, raised you right. Uh, yeah, she could have sent you to school. It Didn't tell us nice. anything about sex. I literally learned from you oh, on goodness. Love Line, secretly listening in the closet. Oh, so so I, I we didn't really finish that story. So when you were living in the not in the closet, but you were living in the, the garage, right? Um, there was like the an offset that we called the the closet, closet of that garage, where uh, it was just like a couple room dividers up, and I slept on a beanbag chair uh, that we found in the dumpster. Nice. Um, and, and then your brothers and you would listen in there. We would listen because we were and, trying to stay up for. The rerun of Friends that would play. Oh, interesting. Um, but you were not allowed to watch TV. No, but we had a secret small TV, and we wait till my mom went into the main oh, house I with see. her boyfriend to go start the band. Is she still <laughs> with that guy? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. She, so uh, she had multiple other relationships. Oh, since. many other yeah, boyfriends yeah. after that. I think uh, it's a really isolating feeling if your partner has no sexual interest in you, and it could do a lot on your psyche to be like, "Am I not?" Is that, is that her? That he, yeah. he was, in, he was so, so he picks women that are interested. He she no, picks think, men that are interested in her. I think after their divorce, she overcorrected as a way to get that validation I of see. her looks again. I'm like I I'm see. not just a mom. I'm not. My body's not it, gone. Interesting. So multiple partners. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, okay, but that was good. her in the snow video. It's talking a good, about her belly hair. <laughs> good insight. Uh, are there any more TikToks? Yes. Uh, I'll take if not, I'll take the video questions after that too. So Oh yeah, let's go over to those. Okay. If you're a butt doctor, please stop scrolling. Oh. If I have a cut on my arm and I place feces inside it, it will get infected. But if I have a cut or a hemorrhoid on my butthole, when feces slides past it, it does not infect it. Why does the butthole wound <laughs> not get infected? But an arm <laughs> wound would get infected if feces were placed inside of it. Thank you. So this is the leader of our cult. Um, it is a fair question. Your uncle? Yeah, uncle. that's my great uncle. <laughs> that, okay, that's, that's the real question there. Uh, so he needs to be sure to use that mind for good. Uh, so the, the, obviously the tissue down there is, is very carefully evolved to okay. be able to handle the bacteria and whatnot that live around there. And he, you don't normally get wounds down there that are deep enough to have really stuff penetrate. But... You can, and it does get infected. It does. You what can if get you're in, trying to sneak a razor blade onto a plane? Then you're, you're going to have problems. That. You're going to have all kinds of problems. But okay. yes, it, it does. If you if you get deep enough, uh, you you're going to have trouble. The, it can get infected. But but, the, and, but how, if the bloodstream, so but you're saying there's enough antibacterial or enough no, white blood cells to kill no, whatever's down there. No, no, the the skin, the the, the it's just a different sort of. Uh, the veins aren't as close to the epidermis of the skin. The structure is deeper. I'm really pushing my no education yeah, to the limit here. 
here. Because you can get a fissure, <laughs> but the fissure doesn't go down into the subderma so much. So it's really the, the I, When I look into your eyes, Drew, I can tell how much I don't know <laughs> <laughs> just the human body. <laughs> because it's not me. It's just a level of concern You're that's good. in your eyes. Of like, You're good. Oh, no, that's not. When a when man comes his ball into a woman's vagina. And comes her, his ball? He comes one of the balls, right? <laughs> and then the baby falls out of her butt. <laughs> <laughs> and the stork eats the you baby. You these guys in the other room. <laughs> oh, my God. It's fantastic. All right. Other video, medical video. Here we go. So, you know that trend where doctors on TikTok um, can diagnose you? For the last two years, my finger looked like this when it's cold outside. Do the white finger? But it's only my middle finger on my left hand. Yep. The only way I can get it to go away is by running it under hot water. And then it gets red. What? I mean, are we talking like, am I going to lose my finger if I let this keep going and I don't go to the doctor? I don't know. So Michael Jackson was just under that? cold water? No, she just didn't use her middle finger enough. So it just fell off. Uh, so it has a name that is called the uh, Reynos Phenomenon. R A Y N A U S. Okay, like a Game of Thrones spinoff. It, it, it is similar, uh, and it's hap. It's it can be in an isolated phenomenon, like it looks like the case with her, or it can be part of rheumatic conditions, rheumatic diseases. And is that like a chameleon where it's just on the surface, or is that something that's internal? There it is in the bloodstream. So it's the bloodstream. It's so you get really oh. significant constricting. There, see it in that that fourth finger down there with the white. Yeah, doesn't that look just like hers? Yeah. Yep. That's and would it. that feel like your hand fell asleep uh, on just that um, finger? I, it can get kind of achy sometimes, but usually nothing. And it can go kind of blue, too. You see some of them are blue. That kind of goes that way. That's I, cool. Never, That's rave fingers. That is I nice. That. That's pretty cool. I've never seen the blue ones. But, uh, yep, there you go. And uh, I saw something else on the board there that sort of looked intriguing. Uh you see She's what not I'm gonna saying? lose that finger. Make him nut seven times a yes. day. I am familiar with this one. This has you been seen this video? Yes, this has been all the rage on 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 Twitter the past I would say a good week. I think Moses is like, yes, that, yeah. that's my jam. This is my jam. <laughs> this is my thing that all these women have going on. I mean, I don't knock women for feeling proud and for wanting to have, you know, that girl power and holding things over him, but no, you've got to give it up, Lee. I please my man in every way. All the ways, wake him up, he gets to nut. Before he leaves out the door, he's leaving empty nuts. <laughs> At work, I am calling him like, come outside, it's your lunch break. It's time for you to get your nut off. When he gets home, he's getting fed. He is getting another nut and one before <laughs> bed or two if he's lucky. And that's it, that's a secret. I make sure that my man nuts at least six or seven times a day. Hey, Robbie, your girlfriend's outside. She says she wants you to nut in the Jiffy Lube parking lot. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. It's so funny. One, I, you can tell he's, he's nutting currently because they couldn't get proper audio to plug that mic in. But first of all, the, the guy can keep up with that. Uh, impressive. Impressive. It seems to me, do, do you see that like she's up to something? And it kind this of feels like what it's called a pick me girl. Um, it's a new phenomenon. It's like it's like someone that is pretending to be like I'm down with the boys. I love sex and oh, it's great as a it's way to be like uh, yes. Me. I think it's a little different. I, I get what you're saying, but I think the other theory is oh look at that noun pick me girl. Yeah, a woman who asserts that she is unlike and sometimes I'm not like than the other girls. Other women. I see. I'm I'm not like a prude, and it seems like again with the video of the polyamory, like the girl in the she was a pick me girl too, it, right? It was a uh, thing of, of like if you're yeah. talking about, it, if you're bragging about, it, if you feel the need to do yeah. it, this is probably not a real thing. I told you, your your mom educated. You just didn't know it. Well, it was actually the Dark Lord Crondor, <laughs> and I have some pamphlets for you. <laughs> so, did you save any of the stuff? You guys and used I to couldn't hand nut out? that many times. I only got two of the balls, so I would have to. Where is he? Where is he making these balls? We have to. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do a little uh, physiology lesson for Moses Wait, here. Next up, you should give me like a proper sex ad. Let's get the male genitalia track here. Let's get the yeah. So, oh yeah, there's so much I don't know about my own. Okay, setup. we'll t we'll tell you. But but she looks to me like somebody who's afraid her boyfriend will stray. Yeah. So she has to make sure everything's depleted yes, all the time. Yes, and it seems like he chose that outfit too. That's yes. like a male outfit of like this is what hot a woman wears. Yep. I used to draw my own porn. Oh, wait, that's all you had because there was no internet. Yes, so I drew were, my own, but I had were, to draw from guesses. Yeah, it is kind of a, a Yeah, this is like if you were, uh, yeah, this is like he chose it. I like the way she's only using the mic sideways. 
for a stretch. Right, and it's definitely not plugged in. <laughs> if you heard the audio on that. But let's get back to my uh, physiology, or at least yes, anatomy please, lesson please, here. Please, please, What are we looking so at here? So keep that... going. I don't like any of those very much. And we're looking at the clit here, right? The clit? That's <laughs> that's a penis. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what if it's much this smaller be, than? Okay. It's gonna be harder than I expected. I that yeah that that blue one in the middle, the male reproductive okay. system. Let's see if we can get a big. Okay. So you see the testes, right, where it says testicle, right? Yeah. And then there's a little tube that goes up to see the prost- the bladder, and at the base of the bladder is the prostate gland. Gosh, I need yeah. like a pointer. You and know what then, I really don't understand is when you get a vasectomy, why stuff still comes out? Because the stuff is not produced from your testicles. Okay. It's bladder full of cum. It, it's, it's produced mixed from the like... prostate gland. Prostate produces all the fluid. So what is that goo and why is that coming out? That's just a delivery system. That's delivery like the Delivery system and immune system and delivery system. The, te- the testicles produce tiny little sperm cells that drip into the fluid that are stored in the seminal vesicles. Show me seminal vesicles. And is this, is this happening mm-hmm. in that one moment of ejaculation or this Can, is... No, no, no. It's, it's Your body's like, it's coming. It's, it's, it's getting it's sprinkling ready. the semen on so, the goop. So, shoot. Sprinkle in the semen on the goop. Go, go the to the far right at the Mark, top. Can I slate that, Chad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to clip it. You wonder where these clips come from. <laughs> the second one in on the top. The the there, yeah. So that is that. The on top of that sits the bladder. Okay. On you top of those, see the thing that's cut in half that looks like a sourdough, sourdough bread or something. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the on the left is the structure. On the right is it cut? Get in to half. the penis, and that's oh. the seminal vesicles where everything is stored, all the fluid, and where the where the semen gets mixed in, the 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 sperm gets mixed in. Sprinkle up the, on you the goo. Sprinkle the goo. Sprinkle the goo. <laughs> sprinkle the goo. <laughs> and then and then when you ejaculate it, it's oh my god. So okay, so then it trickles down into the actual prostate. No, the prostate is is everything's Tack. getting into the vesicles. The okay, advice, it's going up into the vesicles and then dripping the dripping as you call it. So that's it. working like a neutral bullet up there where it's neutral bullet. It. It's not really any mixing that. I, yeah, there must be some mixing. I don't know the physiology. It's not mixing, but your body knows before you ejaculate, maybe seconds before to start, or it's already mixed that. It's already mixed. It's already mixed, and the prostate. The more aroused you are, sort of the more fluid it produces. So you can like, start producing more in a few minutes very quickly. So enough. if you were to get a vasectomy, it would cut off that process. See the or, thing that says vas deferens. Yeah, that's what th- sprinkles the stuff on the goo. And that's where you that's where you tie oh, off. That's what you, you tie, tie that off. off. Yeah. So then yeah. you just get your goo. You just get the goo, right? <laughs> yeah. And I have a prostate cancer, so I've had my prostate out. So I don't produce fluid at all. That's one way to do it. That's the scariest way to get a vasectomy. It's, it, it's not. Well, I have it's to not think scary. about my father. It's a bigger and, surgery, but but it's uh, nice and neat. You yeah, know, the, the just devil. blowing loads. Yeah, there's no loads. Uh, so 40 is when guys should start looking, or you should 50. look early? Unless you have a first degree relative with prostate cancer, 50 is where you do And it. what are some signs? Like if I start, every time I ejaculate, I can't stop sneezing. What is uh, that? That's because when you, that's, you probably have with arousal also. The, the, you've got a lot of very rich blood vessels in the... the Wait, this is a real thing? Yeah, in the septum of the nose. And when you dilate with arousal, they start leaking fluid, and that makes you sneeze. Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. So like, this happens to and more by the people. Way, and Viagra and Cialis, stuffy nose is one of the side effects. Re? Oh mm-hmm. my God! How about that. All right, really quickly. It's so embarrassing, but as an adult, I have learned so much today <laughs> in a very real way. I'm glad to have been a part of it. Alex, what's going on, my friend? Hey, how you doing, Doctor Drew? What's up? So my question is: Is there any permanent damage? or long-term effects from uh, sitting on the toilet so long that my legs go numb? Does that cause any damage in the long-term room? Relationship damage, but no, I wouldn't say. Relationship with God, maybe? Yeah. No. Just so, partner. yeah, that is just uh, your legs falling asleep from pressure, just like if you crossed your legs. Now, if you spent... If you spent hours on the toilet and you had trouble regaining the feeling in your leg, yeah, I mean, you can crush the nerve. You can do that, but it's really difficult to do it. Uh, you'd have to spend like, you, you don't sort of have to be unconscious to be able How to do it. How long could enough. your legs go without the blood flow? Um, not, obviously, no blood flow is going to die. Yeah. I mean, um, it's, a, it's really. The so we see this kind of stuff when people overdose and they lie on a limb, right? Really, I mean, the, the, the nerves get crushed. That's sometimes what happens. But the main thing that happens is the muscle gets crushed. And so you get something called rhabdomyolysis. 
And so it's really, it's very hard to cut off the blood supply to a limb. I mean, if you don't have blood supply limit, a few hours, it's in big trouble. But just big the feeling trouble. of your legs falling asleep, or that's, 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 that's no pressure. long-term damage. No, that's all. just the take I mean, you, again, you can crush the nerve. It's possible, you know, if you really <laughs> work at it, if you, or if you have huge body weight, yeah. you know. But, but the concerning very, very thing likely. is what's in the diet that is making you spend so much time. Or maybe just why so much time. Uh distractions on the phone and silent time away from the wife. <laughs> ja- yeah. Jacking off. Yeah, yeah. sprinkled the nut <laughs> on the juice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Well, Moses, this was fun. I'm glad this I could so it, it was education. so legitimately educational. So it's good. And uh, guys, anything for you guys before I wrap this all up? This was fun. Yeah, this was great. Had a fun time. I are think we perf- all learned you- about the dick today. Yeah, yeah, I'm performing here, and then I have a, a special on HBO Max called Trash White that I wrote, Trash directed, White. built the set. Fantastic. Oh, it's, a, it's a stand-up special? Stand-up special, on yeah. On HBO? Yeah. H- HBO Max? Can I get HBO that? Max, yeah. Okay. Trash White. Not White Trash, trash white. but Trash White. Trash White. You get that? Do you, I get it. Do you, do you relay some of your story there? Yes. Yeah, we oh. talk about growing up well below the poverty line, what that was like, some of the stories about my, my family. It's got to be good. Um, I want... being, working on part two right now for that because I left it on a, a cliffhanger to Ooh, be continued. I can't wait. On that one. Was your mom at the uh, filming? No, didn't want her there. One day I'll meet her. You will. I can't. This <laughs> I would pay any amount for this Patreon only episode. All right, Bo, it's great to have you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you all next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.